this is a bit of a difference here, as you guys might notice. Well, those who have been following my Behind the Brand series, we are doing a live. And I have Ryan Herman with me here. Thank you, man, for coming. Absolutely. Excited to be here. It's, it is exciting for me as well. And a little background uh, on to you. You were on a corporate job, which you quit to go towards your passion, which is entrepreneurship and the marketing, inbound marketing industry. Um, and uh, now you are the head of success at Do Inbound. Am I correct? Uh, head of agency success. Sorry, I have to be more specific here. No um, <clears throat> And your primary role is now to grow the business. And I want to clarify that New Inbound is a startup. And why I wanted Ryan onto the show is because they have a quite different approach to growing that business. And I want to get an inside scope into it. Um, let's start with a little bit about your background. So you come from corporate. Can I ask uh, which company or industry was that? Yeah, so I worked for the third largest home builder in the U.S. Uh, NVR Inc. is the name of the company. And so I actually did something completely different than I did now. I, I was in a sales role there, um, basically helping people uh, who were looking to build a new house. They would come in with me. We would go through the blueprints, make sure everything kind of looked how they wanted to, pick out the plot of land that they were going to be building it on, go through things like designing uh, interiors with cabinets and that kind of stuff, and then figure out the financial piece as well. From there, I'd pass it off to a loan officer who would take them through the mortgage application process, and then a project manager, project manager who would build the house that we had designed uh, together. So uh, definitely a different industry than, uh, than the inbound marketing scene, but so big switch. Right on, bro. Uh, fun fact: I used to work in construction as well, so uh, <laughs> I'm I've come from the similar background. I used to work with concrete. Um, I actually still hold some certification on concrete laboratory and and actually the concrete uh, mixer, whatever uh, they called in 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 state. So Very uh, good. that's a that's a fun um, fun fact there. Uh, what in what point you decided that that's not for you? and you wanted to try uh, start building your own business. Yeah, so to I guess I'm going to take the the background back a little bit further even to just kind of set the scene for everybody to to give my background a little more thoroughly. So, uh taking it back before I started in in the corporate world, uh I helped start an agency. Uh it is now called now an inbound marketing agency, but it was just predominantly website design called Guava Box with a couple of the guys that I went to school with. We all played on the lacrosse, lacrosse team together. I was an entrepreneurship major. They were business majors and marketing majors, that type of thing. And so we got together and said, hey, you know, it'd be really cool to start our own company out of college. They were a couple years ahead of me. And so basically in our college dorm rooms, we sat down, we kind of figured out what we would be doing for people. Uh, and again, at that time, it was primarily WordPress web design. And so we started this company called Guava Box. So uh -huh. what happened is uh, those guys graduated. They took it full time. I was still uh, in school and thought I could still do it full time. But as I learned from going through through college, it, there's a lot of uh, different aspects of sports and school and all this other stuff. And it's hard to give the same amount of effort. And then the other thing that happened was right before my senior year, I was offered an opportunity uh, with a few other guys who ride my bicycle across the United States from Seattle to New York City and raising money for the school. And, and so that would be my entire summer. So at that point, it kind of said, you know what, that's an awesome opportunity. I can't really go full time anyway. So I ended up pulling out of, of Guava Box uh, at the time. And out, that left me out of college with needing to pursue some sort of career. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do senior year uh, coming out of college. And this opportunity, a woman came and spoke in one of my classes who ha had worked for Ryan Holmes, which was the, the name of the builder under NVR Inc. that I worked for. And, uh, and that's how I got plugged in there. So I went and I said, you know, what? I'll try the corporate thing for a while. I'll get some good skills and sales and, and other aspects there, which, which could be useful for starting my own company later. And it just so happened that a couple years go by from there. So now we're four or five years from when I originally started Guava Box. I kept in communication with those guys at a very nice exit with them. So there was no hard feelings or anything there. Uh, and just some great guys to work with and said, hey, look, 
we're, the agency's growing. Uh, we need some more people to come on, but we're also starting uh, this software company called Do Inbound out of a pain that we felt as an agency. Uh, and, and we're just about to start kicking this thing off. Would you be interested in coming back and, and helping with both of those two things primarily, uh, you know, now on the Do Inbound side of things? So uh, it was, I was there from the beginning and then I left for the big part of the middle where all the hard work was for them to, to grow the agency. And now I'm here for the hard work of growing the, uh, the software company, which is the second one that we're starting out of there so that's the full all right. background all right perfect sounds good and i'm all for you know trying new things like i'm i'm um, always trying new things to see what i can take from or learn from or meet new people and they always have a certain insight so that's a great great and encouraging story there um kind of so you guys um I'll let me get, gather my thoughts <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little bit so you are now full on uh, growing your business and what you told me that your main channel for growing this and getting an audience is in podcast. That's a, that's an interesting choice. Why, why podcasting? Yeah, so it's a little bit less conventional, I think, than uh, than what most people are doing. Although I've started to see it more and more as a strategy, but essentially what we did is from growing our agency, we had the opportunity to meet a lot of other great agency owners all around the world. And we uh, partnered with HubSpot to basically start offering inbound marketing services. So now the agency, we do inbound marketing and we do a lot of uh, website design, but primarily in HubSpot COS. It's kind of what the, what the agency is known for. And yeah. through that, we thought, you know, what would be really would have been really helpful for us is if we had people to kind of guide us as and give us some tips as we were growing this agency to shortcut some of the, the things that we had to learn the, the hard way. So we thought, man, it would be really cool if we started a podcast interviewing all of the CEOs of the biggest agencies all around the world, having them share their stories, how they built their agency, and maybe some things that they learned from, from failure and success that they could be passed on to other agency owners. And at the same time, what we started to realize is for Do Inbound, the, the, the people that we wanted to use the platform are, are those same types of people. Essentially, what we're trying to do is, okay, the last three years, we've learned all these processes and things that we need to do uh, as an inbound agency, whether it's blogging or eBooks or these types of things. And, and what we really were looking for was, okay, how do we make this repeatable? Um, because if we can make it repeatable, we find a good process. We can repeat across multiple customers. We're going to be more efficient and effective at, at what we're doing. And yeah. so we started looking for a platform to be able to uh, to do this on and we tried a lot of the common ones Basecamp and teamwork and Asana and Trello You know the list kind of went on and on for us there and what we found is that none of them were quite set up for how an inbound agency really functions and operates. So that's where why we started to build uh, Do Inbound was to help other agencies who are going through that and trying to uh, make them more efficient really document those processes as well. So what we thought was, okay, we had to kind of struggle through this and blaze through this ourselves, kind of blaze our own trail here. But if we can offer a platform, uh, which is due inbound to those agencies to, to help them be more successful quickly uh, and documents in this process in a very specific way, but also start a podcast that helps these same agency owners build this community uh, and help educating them on how to make their agency better. Really, that's what we're going for is, is creating that community, not just, it's, it's more than just a tool. That's kind of what we always say. It's more than just a platform that you need. You need a, a whole support base. And so uh, it started with one podcast. Now we have four different shows. Uh, that we run and what we've done is just built this large community of other inbound agencies who listen and contribute to that podcast bring them on uh, together to kind of help bring everyone up uh, to a higher level and that's really what we're going for so that's uh, that was a big part of the podcasting all right <clears throat> that sounds very very interesting first of all uh, okay podcasting is coming to Finland it's not huge business yet or or even uh, it's not hugely present in Finland yet. So the premise, what you have is good. You want to bring the knowledge and the pain and you want to interview. Um, was that the most contributing, like basically because you took the other inbound agencies, you, you got an interview with them, you got to uh, show your platform and they were impressed because obviously it's made very much for them was was it the word of mouth or or was it the did you have some sort of distribution plan that just was executed so well that you got that um uh show going so wide and broad uh, or or what would you say that was 
contributing your success in podcasting? Yeah, that's a great question. So what basically what we did was the inbound community is a big one, right? There's agencies all yeah. over the world. There's different people all over the world that are doing it. And it's still growing in, in other, other areas. You know, I, I talk with my job, I do a lot of the webinars and the demos uh, of the platform and, and talk with other agency owners basically all day long around, around the world. And so it's interesting for me to hear kind of how that movement is, is making its way across the world. Um, but what we did is a lot of it, because it's, it's a big movement, but it's still almost a small community feel, that word of mouth was really big for us uh, in the beginning. But the other thing, like if you guys are podcasting and trying to figure out uh, how do I distribute this to to other people? It's really figuring out kind of who are the thought leaders in in the space. Maybe inviting them on to to be on your show. Like a lot of us, you know, the the, the nice thing is when we bring on a big podcast um, person. You know, we have some of the biggest agency owners. They have a big reach when they get interviewed. They spread it out and kind of show everyone, hey, I was interviewed on this, and this is what it looks like. And by that, you know, we kind of grow. But if you have built a product or a service that that services a, a particular industry, just getting plugged in as a thought leader in that industry, and, and like for us, it's just taking our expertise of what we've been, you know, kind of grinding through these past few years and, and figuring out, and then helping share that with people who are just either getting started or have struggled in certain areas. And so what we did is we we figured out okay, what are the main pain points of people? Um, the yeah. inbound agency journey is essentially our, our biggest podcast. That's the one that kind of started it all. That is where we interview at just kind of a high level the CEOs. How did you grow this thing? But then the, some of the other shows that we did, uh, I do one called Inbound Sales Journey. So selling inbound services is, is a challenge for a lot of agencies out there and trying to improve that process. So that's one that we kind of go through. Uh, and in this season, uh, this is also a good point if you're considering podcasting, be as specific as possible because the more specific you are, you are the more value adding you are. So what we did is we did shorter episodes this season and each season yeah. is simply talking about how to overcome one common objection that we heard. So we broke out our seasons into, into quarters. So there's one per week, 12 episodes a quarter. And what we do is every episode is only about 10 minutes long. It's taking the top 12 objections we hear when selling inbound services, explaining how to answer those and overcome those. And that's just a lot of great value for people in a short little segment there. We did one called the happy client show because customer retention and talking with, with customers and keeping that relationship up is, is something that's always a little bit of a challenge for people. So we talked through some different aspects there. And then one that we have is called agency toolbox. And that is all of the coolest tools that we're using to make our agency better. Um, and an in-depth guide, not just on what they are, but how to use them and even giving people CSS files that we've created to help brand it, you know, to, if they want to use the same thing for their agency, but just really trying to provide a lot of value to people um, is, is a big part of, of the podcasting. And then beyond just podcasting, what we're doing is we're writing recaps on all these things. So not only are you building the community and allowing people audibly to hear you, to feel connected with you. And it's so, you know, it's fun for me because everyone, I jump on these, these demos, everyone's like, I feel like I already know you already, right? Because they've heard my voice and they've heard, mm -hmm. heard me kind of share some some different things with them already uh, but beyond that which is an awesome benefit to podcasting now we're writing things down and getting that SEO value starting right. to build inbound leads uh, that way as well so we're building the community to help them out in a very specific tangible way that is our best fit target buyer for our software as well um, and that's really what what inbounds all about right you provide the most amount of help to the people that you're trying to uh, either sell your product or your service to that that's going to be even more helpful for them and that's what we've done is built that community then that, that comes in and buys the product so yeah that sounds like uh, the client should be flocking to you man that's a great answer great uh, work you guys are doing there um, like I love that you guys are now opening, taking the podcast and doing it, uh, write it out and do it a kind of like a. You end up with a huge manual of of, of things, and that's kind of like what I wanted to ask. Like, how do you guide uh, the buyer through that journey? Like, okay, I'm I'm listening to your podcast the first time. Or do you have like some sort of call to actions? Do you have something that guides you to your blog landing pages? How, what's your funnel like? Yeah. So basically what we've done is we've tried to provide the listener a few different ways to hear us, right? So we have put our podcast on iTunes and on Stitcher and on a few different places so that they can find it, subscribe that way. What we did on our website was we, we built something out called the Learning Center. And essentially what you can do there is there's the four different shows that you can uh, 
that you can select and be able to see all the different episodes and filter by, by show there. Now, every show has that, that recap, right, where we will write down kind of verbally, not certainly not word for word or anything like that. Really, it's just kind of I'm writing it after and maybe throwing some additional things or uh, anything that I like in there. But at the end, we have different ebooks set up for every shows or different offers. So what, like, for, let me give you an example, a specific example. So I have my inbound sales journey show. Well, at the end of every inbound sales journey show, you will see uh, that I created an ebook, which is the 10 steps to setting or uh, setting up the sales system for your inbound agency. So people obviously are in the sales mindset when they're listening to my show, they're trying to figure out how do I make my sales system better? Well, I have an ebook now that I've written out that lays out kind of the 10 first steps to take as you do that. That's a free ebook that people can download. And when they go ahead and download that ebook, then they're automatically put into our CRM. In, in our case, we use the HubSpot CRM. So they're entered into our HubSpot database. So we can kind of follow up with them and, and keep track and basically trying to figure out, hey, did you like the ebook? Is there anything that you'd like to see in there that's not in there? So like for me, I'm just always trying to make what we're giving to people better. I want our free offerings to be top notch because that's how you're going to continue to grow that community by, by being helpful to people up front without saying, hey, I, I just want your money. You know, that's not what it's about. It's about yeah. really helping people out building that brand. Uh, but at the same time, because we have we've have a specific audience, we have a specific product, almost all of the leads that come to us can also be very much helped by the software that we've created. So we've kept our content specific to keep our prospects specific. And you can carry this to a bunch of different industries, right? So we talk, I talk to inbound agency owners all around the world who they might sell inbound services to people in different industries instead of creating the, the general broad inbound marketing eBooks or, you know, take that and, and apply to whatever it is that, that whoever's listening to us right now, Jonas, whatever you're working on, mm -hmm. there, there's going to be some general content you can create, but, but really focus in who is our buyer persona? Who are the people we're trying to sell to and what specific content can, can we create to them so that our leads are always going to be good so that they can be helped by whatever product or service we, we are selling as well, because it just makes sense. When I reach out to someone, ask them how they think the eBook went, uh, ask them if they'd be interested in checking out what we've been working on with doing inbound, it, it just makes sense to do it, right? They want to, they're, looking for everyone's always looking for ways to improve and that's what we're trying to do is, is help get them there quicker so yeah that's a great answer nothing to that man that that's just like um there's enough noise so if you're not producing any value you don't bother and, and you guys are living that like it's a uh, job well done Thank that's you. All, all, all i i gotta say when i listen to you and the the uh you know determining who's your you know this sort of like uh, buyer persona who's the uh, right customer for you guys and then going niche on that that's a, that's a really good one and is that the first step you take though like you you determine who who's gonna buy what's his problem or her problem and then you start you know putting it in a little content bits and then you produce the show and then possibly you compile those into an ebook that you can offer out or it, do you want to shed a light on how the process of, of this this uh, niche niche content goes? Yeah, so I think for us we had a bit of an advantage in this because we were our own customer <laughs> uh, at right the time we, we created a, a product based on a need that we felt that we knew there were others like us that were feeling the same thing uh, but if you are starting uh, a company and you're trying to figure out okay I have this idea for a product or a service or maybe I've even created this this product or this service and I'm really trying to figure out uh, who I want to sell this to mm. building out buyer persona should always be one of the first things that you do uh, and the reason that that is is <clears throat> As, if you have solid buyer personas, and basically what I mean that by that is you figured out who is our best fit customer, what what type of person is this very specifically. Mm -hmm. If you can do a good job of figuring that out, then you're going to be able to know, okay, the buyers are asking these types of questions and that's your, your content gold right there. If you can figure out these are my buyer personas, these are the questions that they're that they're asking, now I can create this specific content based on questions that I know they're asking through this journey that they're going through, trying to find a, a solution uh, to their problem. And that's the content you want to be creating. That That's how we get our ideas for, for what to create. So that's exactly what we did. We figured out, okay, 
we are one agency, but there's a ton of other agencies out there that can use our product. Who are these types of people? Is it the CEOs that are looking for it? Is it the marketing manager at the agency or the salesperson who, who's looking for these different pieces of content? And let's build our content based off of those buyer personas, based on those people, what questions they're asking and, and so on and so forth. Um, because that's how you're going to get the, the gold, the, you know, the specific mm -hmm. content, the ebook ideas, the podcast ideas. And the other thing I'll say is uh, consistency is key. So mm -hmm. we, once a week, for every show, we release a new episode. Uh, and, and what we do is uh, we plan our seasons a quarter in advance. So to be, you want to also be efficient in these things. You don't want to be necessarily, if you're doing a, a weekly podcast every week, just be uh, doing a new uh, uh, episode once per week. If you can batch 12 of them together, spend two days really going at it, uh, podcasting and, and laying out your episodes, and then a couple more days writing and stuff. Obviously, you're blocking off a lot of time there, but you don't need to worry about that, and you're a lot more efficient at doing it that way. So that's what we'll do. We'll actually already have the content prepared, but we'll leak it one day or one, one time of week and we'll be always consistent and on top of that. So, so our listeners, if you're building this community, you have people listening to you, they, they want that consistency. They want to know, okay, every week I'm going to get a fresh new episode of this. I'm excited for this. That kind of plans in and becomes routine in their schedule. And that's, that's a, a big key to success with podcasting as well, I think is being yeah. consistent. That, that's a great advice again uh, batching batching the content instead of just trying to figure out when and when something comes out and then you do it in a rush you actually batch it up uh, record 10 episodes or so and then you just yeah the trip it out that, that that's a great again great advice for anyone who's thinking about or starting podcasting um, let's talk about a little bit of tools um, I, I understand that you guys, your own platform, that is your key, and there's a very interesting structure. And I recommend if if you guys are interested or working in, in inbound marketing, have a chat with Ryan, and he will show you the tool. I had the incest scoop on that, and I, I was I was sold on on the functionality because it is exactly what it promises. So, but anything other tools you guys using, or is it all free stuff, or have you been thinking about kind of building the funnel further with certain tools like yeah uh, that's a good questions as well so uh, not everything that we use is free un unfortunately uh, we do pay for a lot of different tools that we use but some things are, are definitely worth it and when you're trying to figure out tools it always is uh, I think a lot of people look at the cost of a tool and just think like like HubSpot is not cheap. It costs like $800 a month, right, to, to be able to use that. And you think, man, that's just a ton of money. I don't have it or, or I do have it. But then you need to think kind of beyond that and figure out like what's the cost benefit analysis there? What, how, how much time? I don't think enough people kind of look at things in terms of time that they save as well. So we look at HubSpot taking all these different things, allowing us to publish our blog posts on there, allowing us to see uh, all the context we have coming in, uh, the ability to use their CRM and, and the time kind of centralizing all that saves us. You know, we typically like at our agency will charge about $150 uh, an hour beyond project scope if there's different mm -hmm. things there. So there's a little bit of a way, everyone should have a way I think to quantify what an hour of time is worth to you. And if it's going to save you that time, then, then do it because it's going to be worth it if it's essential to growing your business. So HubSpot is one one that I definitely recommend uh, that people check out if you're looking for, uh, uh, I mean, it does a, a variety of things. You can manage social media on there. You can see all the contacts that come in through your website that have filled out eBooks and that kind of thing. They have a CRM as well. So you can do e email outreach and a bunch of things. Now there's some little, I say $800 a month. That's their pro level. There's little upsells in there, you know, that you can or cannot use, you know, depending on what you're looking for there. And you kind of navigate those waters. Um, but HubSpot's key for, for what we do, both their CRM as well as the marketing side of things. Uh, something that HubSpot developed uh, that is probably one of my favorite tools on the sales side is called Sidekick. Uh, so oh. there's a free version of that. There's a paid version. We have the, the uh, paid version of that as well. Uh, huge, 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 huge time saver for me. Ability to see what people are doing on our website, if they're when they've opened my emails, if they've clicked on links, just really helps my follow up stay consistent. You can create email templates with smart content uh, to be able to to email people quickly, so you're not always sending these custom emails. Which obviously everyone, no one wants to be sent a templated email, but you can do some really nice things there with. Uh, with saving your time and still having some personal templated emails and kind of play around with that and also track some of the results in there. Uh, Sidekick is, is huge for me. Um, mm. From a platform, in case anyone is starting uh, a software company or anything that's listening, uh, we use something we called ProfitWell to uh, track, track our profitability, our profitability as, a company. as a company. 
The other thing that the we use is intercom, intercom, and that allows and that people allows to communicate people with us right inside the platform, inside the platform as well as be able to see how are people using the platform, how often are they logging on, what are they doing within there, those types of things. Uh, intercom is one of our favorite uh, tools that way as well. Something's going on with our screen. It's jumping. It's making me a little bit uh, <laughs> fuzzy in the head. But yeah, that's a great insight again. And uh, uh, I would like to kind of hear um, – Oh, the validating on on the prospects and the leads you're looking for the sidekick and you're using hopspot and all that and it, it kind of gives you an you know the automated uh life cycle uh process there that when people sign up for the ebook you start getting you know the lead timeline uh that's a good stuff but do you guys what is your key metric in validating something is it conversions like you said that a lot of people are on your site downloading a bunch of stuff or or and and you have a certain buyer personas do you validate the personas by conversions or what what's your key metric you're or, saying in kind of knowing if have we targeted the right the right people that way yeah exactly exactly yeah just quickly <clears throat> quickly that like what what are some of the key metrics that you guys follow yeah, so on, on podcasting, you can do things like kind of look at views, how many people are, are viewing things. Now, I this is not uh, like my area of expertise, so I don't know if I'm the best one to speak to exactly what the numbers are. Uh, Gray and Andrew kind of handled this aspect a little bit more. Uh, but there are definitely metrics like obviously how many listeners do we have, how many unique listeners do we have to podcast. We also look at conversion rates a lot on, on the landing pages. Now, one thing that we just did to give an example of that, so we've always had at the bottom of our podcast, you can fill out some information. Uh, you can go in here and you can click and download a new book here. But what we started just doing is just lighting calls to action. So as you're scrolling down the page, a little side uh, plug comes out with, with the ability for you to click there and you get it download that ebook as well so what you can start to do is as you test these different things you can look at things like conversion rates of how many people are clicking on those filling out the information and downloading that uh, and start to just kind of play around one thing that we're big on and it's so easy not to do this and, and it's a challenge it is a challenge to do it but it's to always be changing up what you are doing um, so on like the sales side for example I've been doing personal demos for for most people for a long time now but now it's becoming a little overwhelming we're five or six demos in a day uh, they're supposed to last a half an hour I'm a talker so they usually last closer to an hour <laughs> uh, uh, but through that and, and uh, what we've now started doing is today actually I said you know what let's try webinars uh, as a primary method of primary to the close rate is compared to the close rate on personal demos so it's it's important to not only not change constantly how you're doing things on a marketing on a sales side but understand what those different metrics are uh, what, what is your close rate, uh, how many people are coming in and downloading ebook, what are the conversion rates there, these types of, of metrics, and then always be changing it, see how things uh, change. Now, uh, on like a smaller example, uh, emails. I have different email templates that I use, and I will always track what's the open rate, what's the click-through rate on that, and which emails are closing. So if people are coming in and they're uh, signing up for a demo, Does it? do they sign up on the third email, or do they sign up on the sixth email? Which ones are, are most effective here? And then I will always change out those email templates just to see do I get better response open rates from different email subjects but those are the things that are tedious right it's, it's always nice to think about doing that but I think a lot of people don't follow through with that but you need to especially when you're starting up and you're trying something new uh, it's so important to to be doing that um, and so those are just a couple of the things I know I just listed like a, a, a ton of different <laughs> metrics that we that we use and they're not in a super cohesive manner uh, but, but those are some of the, the things that we do um, but always be improving always try new things always track your efforts as well and the tough thing is when you start up it's like what's good you know that that's what I always try to think of what what is good and you can google you know what's a good open rate and those types of things but everyone's gonna be a little bit different so you kind of need to set your your own normal what is our normal and then are we performing or not performing and just always try to increase that 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 new normal um, for, for us so yeah, I, I guess one of, one of the most important things is, is really documenting your progress. And when you start out, um, a lot of great imp entrepreneurs say, if you would give an advice on, on your 20 year old self, they say, learn, document things. And, and that comes back to what you said, that you always have to be testing new stuff. You'll, and, and, and if you don't document, how do you know what your baseline, like what is that, that line for you? Like, okay, I can go online and Google and, and, and get some, uh, industry specific, 
uh, numbers, but that might not work. There's so many variables that it, you might just get discouraged and quit your business on, on based on that. So <clears throat> I stand with you. I stand with you, Ryan, there that create your own and, and be specific, be uh, documenting your progress. And that's that's how you can uh, create and publish and optimize and keep on cycling around. And, and then you start seeing results and you start kind of uh, your brain starts to read the matter, what matters and what doesn't matter. And then you can optimize even better. Yeah. And that's for us, a, it's, it's never being content. So. Mm -hmm. There's, exactly. you're always going to get good and you're always going to be better, but there's always better than better, right? It could always mm -hmm. be better. Uh, and, and a lot of times you're just not going to know. For example, these webinars, we're going to kind of start doing these today. I have mm -hmm. no idea what the close rate, right, is going to be compared to, to the personal demos where I get to actually interact with people and talk with them. But you know what? We're going to give it a try. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to quickly measure it so that if it doesn't go well, I'm not going to do it for the next three months and, mm -hmm. and try to slowly figure that I'm gonna try to quickly figure that out, get enough of a sample size, do them for a few weeks. And, and if we're gonna fail, fail fast and move on to the next thing. Right. Um, but, but always trying the new thing. Um, so I need to know based on close rate and also based on my time, how much time it's saving me to work and, and free me up to do other things. Wh where's the trade off there? So it is really important to, to follow some of those metrics. So Yeah, and there's tons of things. It is good that it's on video, it's recorded. You can go over it and just kind of mark them down. I have to do probably listen a couple of times this episode. There's so much good stuff right here. Um, but the point is get started. You don't have to do everything at once if you're just starting out, but do something pick a couple of metrics or a couple of things then you start documenting and measuring and then build upon that that's important um otherwise you know you're you're gonna be five years from now and look back and like oh my gosh i'm still at the same place because i don't have any uh, <laughs> any any foundation on this uh, we're running a little bit over over schedule but um if uh, if i ask two more questions like basically what are the biggest lessons learned and, and then who are you following right now? Uh, those are simple questions, hopefully. Yeah, uh, I'll keep them brief. I'm sorry, I'm a talker. I'm, I'm not surprised we're over. <laughs> hey, hey, no problem. I, I, I like listening, man, so. Cool, cool. Uh, well, key, key takeaways, I'll jump right in here. There's three things, uh, I guess, that I would say when you're starting a company. Uh, first, everything takes longer than you think. Um, so you can have <clears throat> plans and projections, and this is how long. Don't be discouraged when things take longer than you initially anticipate. Everything takes longer than you initially anticipate. Developers don't work as fast as you're gonna think. The the sales leads don't come through as quickly as you hope that they will. You know, there's all these different factors, right, that that, that kind of go into this and hang ups. Uh, just don't get discouraged there. Um, the other thing I wanna communicate people is just the value of inbound marketing. Uh, we're, we're growing a startup pri primarily using inbound marketing. As of now, we haven't done a single paid search, uh, anything like that, and wow. our, our growth just continues to, to just be awesome uh, I was looking at the metrics before we hopped on here and our uh, our web traffic uh, over last month has more than doubled from this month as these shows continue to pick up and people come in. And so it's fun to be able to track some of these metrics like right? page views and where people are coming in on and that kind of things. But uh, inbound marketing is the best long term solution. It's not where you're paying for something. If you stop paying all your leads vanish. We own these leads. They'll continue to grow uh, as things continue to uh, evolve for us. You'll just see that that growth. Um, so definitely consider inbound marketing, uh, no matter you know what industry really you're, you're working on. People, you're always selling to people, they're always asking questions. You can always be the person that's answering them the best, um, providing the best value for them. Uh, and then the third thing I guess would be that the team is everything. So as you're starting to grow the team, um, from me, my experience, I had worked with these guys before. It was a big decision to quit a nice steady paycheck at a corporate job and start to try to start something new. We didn't have, you know, barely any agencies on when I first came on here. No one was receiving steady paychecks from this company. Uh, and, you know, but I knew that I could trust Andrew and Gray and Ben and these guys here that I'd worked with before. So make sure that 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 the team is is the right people with the right skills, but but just integrity wise that I know I can fully trust these guys with, with anything. And they're my best friends. Everyone says don't go to business with friends. I think that's crap. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a, a believer in that at all. It has to be the right friends, obviously, but uh, we were Work so well because uh, of the trust that we all have together. Um, so the team, the team is is so important beyond just the product. It, you know, in in the idea, it's who's executing on that. That's key. Yeah, very very good answer. Very good answer. And, and I, the inbound marketing. A lot of people 
don't even know what inbound marketing means like that word inbound is just something that they can scope okay that might be a different thing in states but in finland people are still learning and and what for me in inbound marketing what what's the difference is that it's customer centric and it's value centric and when you put those two together your marketing just rocks because it offers so much value to the customer and it's not about you it's about them so it's a it's a great answer again uh and and just like if you don't know what inbound marketing is i recommend you read up on it and check out ryan's work because what i've seen and what i've heard today it's just like they're the top top uh top doc on this one i guess i would say so <laughs> okay. but yeah la last question which ceos or influencers are you following at the moment yeah, so I've been thinking uh, this was one that you'd sent me to be able to, to consider a little bit before we hopped on here. What I wanted to do was take three people, uh, three podcasts that I really enjoy, especially if people are thinking about getting into podcasting as a way <clears throat> of marketing, um, and just going to give you three random ones. Uh, the first one, first two guys I'm going to throw out here. This is if you're interested in inbound marketing and HubSpot and how kind of all that stuff works. Uh, there's two guys I really like, Marcus Sheridan and George B. Thomas from the sales line. The sales line is an agency in the States here that, that does inbound marketing. Marcus and, and George do a lot of speaking all around the world and things, though. They're great. Um, but they have something called the Hubcast. And, and basically, the premise of, of that podcast is really being the thought leaders on HubSpot, what's new there, how everything with inbound marketing ties in. Um, so if you have questions about that, awesome guys to listen to. Very funny guys, but very smart guys uh, as well. And uh, I've been following them them quite a bit from transferring from corporate America to trying to get caught up to speed on everything that is inbound and HubSpot and that kind of stuff. So they they continue to be consistent and just pump out some awesome content there. So those guys, uh, two other guys. Now these aren't inbound specific at all. These are just two great podcasts. Uh, two great podcasters. One is Tim Ferriss. Um, I listen to uh, the Tim Ferriss show uh, all the time. He that is a, a good example of a longer form podcast. So he is. It wouldn't be rare to have a, a, a guest on for two or three hours uh, in one yeah. of his episodes. But basically, the premise there is he will uh, interview the top performers. Uh, could be anything from he said Arnold Schwarzenegger on there to um, Olympic skier. You know, just it could be anything. The top performers, whatever they do, the chef for the president. He's I mean, just a ton of different guests that are all great. Uh, but that's a great example of someone who does like a long form interview and is very good at it. And then the next one is uh, uh, Gimlet is a company that that uh, the first season of their show, it's called Startup Podcast. They went through and they documented what it's really like to start a company. I thought they did an nice. excellent job with it, uh, but their company is a podcast producing company uh, funded by some some big investors that, that came in and gave them some money to do it. He, uh, Alex Bloomberg is the host there. He is a former NPR guy. Uh, I, I always think like, I can always tell who's an NPR and who's not. They, they all have a very great podcasting style and sound. Um, but these are the guys that I listen to and who, who I try to when I'm doing some podcasting uh, focus on some of the things that they do well and, and take some of those and, and throw them into our own podcast here. But it's always good to learn from the people who are who are the best at what they do. And, and those three guys, those three shows, I would I would suggest uh, people checking out. Uh, been really influential for me and helpful for me. So perfect. That's awesome. Uh, I know Tim Ferriss, but the two other ones were the Sales Line uh, and then and then the. Yep, the Hubcast uh, and Startup Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah Startup Cast. Uh, that was new to me, and I'll definitely check it out. Cool. Uh, I remember this YouTube show from Tim Ferriss. It was like a random show. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you ever yeah, heard of it. Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it was kind of long form, too, long videos. And they was just like, okay, what are we going to talk about today? And then they just like throw ideas and, okay, let's talk about it. And it's like, that's the name, Random Show. Yep. But um, <laughs> as a cl clever clever little soccer that Tim um, yeah. all right perfect do you have anything you want to add uh, no I think uh, this was a, a great time Jonas for me and I uh, appreciate you having me on uh, yeah keep doing what you're doing the podcast and the video podcast all this stuff is is great but uh, yeah if anyone wants to uh, get in touch with me uh, and ask any any questions at all uh, happy to connect on on either Twitter uh, or shoot me an email it's uh, just Ryan at doinbound.com. Uh, it might take me a little bit longer to get back to you there, but but uh, happy to uh, to connect with with anyone and any general questions that you, that you have. Happy to just talk and, and try to help people out. So, 
Perfect. I'll, I'll link everything below so you guys can uh, come back and uh, I'll link them into the blog as well. I'm going to write some uh, some of the key takeaways uh, into a blog so you can, you guys are welcome to uh, read it and uh, then find everything that we have been discussed in a shorter form. Uh, but yeah, it's been my pleasure. And um, yeah, I can't thank you enough for taking a time out for me a busy day to have a little chat with me. Hopefully we can... Uh, follow up on on some point absolutely and, um, um, it's it's great hearing from you thank you again and until the next time guys bye 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 everybody mm -hmm.